Hey guys, Mr. Kalala here. We're going to quickly talk about angles and transversals. Uh, this is one of the 8th grade standards for geometry. Let's take a look. So first of all, a transversal is a line that intersects two or more lines. I want to really highlight the fact that the definition is two or more. Um, I would say that most of the time you'll see it like this, where it's only crossing two lines. But I want to make sure we all understand it can be more. It can be three, four, five, ten, twenty lines. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's a line that crosses other lines uh, and intersects them. Uh, and like I said, we will typically see it with just two lines, but it can be more. Now, when it intersects those lines, it's obviously going to create lots of different angles. Now, we have these numbered here just so we can see that when it's crossing two lines, it's actually creating eight angles. Um, we have kind of basically a, a set of angles up here as well as a set of angles up here, down here at the bottom. Um, it's very important to understand that what we're going to be really paying attention to here is the relationship between all of those different angles. So that's what we're, we're looking to kind of understand here. All right, now the first thing we need to understand is this idea of corresponding angles. All right, now corresponding angles are angles which occupy the same relative position at each intersection when a transversal crosses two or more lines. And the really, really, really important part that I want you to focus on as we are looking at this is down here at the bottom that if lines are parallel, corresponding angles are congruent. Now congruent just basically means that they're the same, meaning that they're equal. So co corresponding angles are always going to be equal in, in terms of how many degrees they are. So let's uh, look at this a little bit closer. We have here, uh, again, uh, two lines. I want you to notice that these lines are parallel, so we know that these corresponding angles are going to be congruent. Um, most of the problems that you see are, are going to be corresponding lines, pretty much all of them. All right, so let's take a look and just make sure we understand what corresponding means. So like, uh, for instance, number one, angle one here, is going to correspond with angle five. The reason we consider them to be corresponding is because, again, they are in the same relative position. So what we mean by that is that angle one is basically on the top left of this set of angles, Okay, and angle 5 is also on the top left, but of this set. So they're in the same position at their given kind of intersection, if you will. Okay, so we can think of some other angles here, uh, like angle 4 is going to correspond with angle 8, because again, it's their relative position. It is on the bottom right, and so is angle 8. Okay, so I would hope that it goes without saying, therefore, that angle 2 would correspond with angle 6, and angle 3 would correspond with angle 7. And again, the whole point here is that we should understand, hopefully, that corresponding angles are equal. So if I say that angle 1 is, let's just call it 120 degrees, that would mean that angle 5 is also 120 degrees because they are corresponding. Okay? Now, we can take this a step further and also uh, not forget about what we know about vertical and supplementary angles. Now, vertical and supplementary angles are in the other assignment this week. They, the, uh, they're part of the normal 7th grade standard. So if you haven't looked at that assignment yet, that ed puzzle, I would go back and check that out. You need to understand vertical and supplementary. Um, if you have already looked at that, you know that vertical angles are any angles that are across from each other when lines intersect. So uh, when I look at this uh, transversal, the transversal intersects each of the lines. So I have intersecting lines here. And so I know that, say, angle 1 uh, is vertical with angle 4. Okay, And angle 2 would be vertical with angle 3 and so forth because they're across from each other. We know that vertical angles are always equal. The corresponding angles are always equal, and so are vertical angles. So that tells me that when I look at this, I could say, hey, angle 1, it corresponds with angle 5, so they're equal. But angle 1 is also vertical with angle 4, so they're equal. And, hey, angle 5 is vertical with angle 8, so they're equal. So all of those angles are all equal to each other. Okay. We also have supplementary angles. Uh, again, that's in the other video. Supplementary angles are angles that together equal 180 degrees. Uh, you should know that straight lines always are 180 degrees when we put them together. So if I look at this line here, uh, I can think about the fact that therefore angle 1 
and angle 2 are vertical with each other. So angle 1 and angle 2, together they're going to be 180 degrees. I could look at any straight line in this whole thing. So I could look at the transversal as a straight line here. And knowing that that's a straight line, I could say, hey, well, that means that 1 and 3 are supplementary. Or it could mean that 2 and 4 are supplementary. Any two angles that combine to make a straight line are always going to be supplementary with each other, meaning 180 degrees. Okay, So we've got corresponding vertical and supplementary angles. Let's talk about um, two different types of interior angles. Now, interior means inside. Um, these are both types of interior angles. So when we say interior, what we are referring to is inside the parallel lines. Okay, so that means we are talking about angles 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, so we are only referring to those angles inside the parallel lines. That's what makes them interior. And we have alternate interior as well as same side interior. Now, I've given you definitions, but the definition should be fairly obvious based on the names. So alternate interior, alternate means go every other or opposite sides. Um, so when we say that, we are referring to two, uh, the two angles on either side of the transversal. So that would be like angle 3 and angle 6. They would be considered alternate interior, or angle 4 would be considered alternate interior with angle 5. Uh, and the key here is that alternate interior angles are always congruent. Again, meaning equal. So angle 3 is equal to angle 6, and angle 4 is equal to angle 5. Alternate interior, again, opposite sides of the interior, and they are equal in uh, measure. We also have same side interior. Same side interior, just like it sounds, they're on the same side. So that means that angle 3 is same side interior with angle 5, and angle 4 would be same side interior with angle 6. Okay, um, Same side interior angles are always supplementary. All right, so anytime you take two same side interior angles, they have to equal 180 degrees. So I could say angle 3 plus angle 5, that has to equal 180. Every single time, those same side interior will be supplementary. Okay? Well, let's put this all together and let's see what it looks like within a problem. We might have a problem like this where we're asked to find the value of x. Um, what you basically want to do is you want to take whatever you're looking for and you want to basically see uh, how it relates to some other piece of information that you have. So the easiest way to do this is typically to just start labeling everything you can. So for instance, um, if I know that this angle right down here is 75 degrees, that tells me that there are other angles that are 75 degrees. Everything that's either vertical or corresponding with this is going to also be 75 degrees. So I could say that um, that 75 corresponds to this, which means it also corresponds to this. Basically all those spots where we are on the top left of an intersection of angles. I could also start labeling anything that's vertical from that. So this right here is vertical from it. Okay. Um, so that's also 75 degrees. I have other angles that are vertical from this blue one that I labeled. Uh, sorry, are corresponding from that blue one. And they're vertical to the other 75 degree angles as well. So all of those are 75 degrees. I mean, at this point, I, I could look at what I have and I could say, hey, 75 and x plus 25, those make a 180, they're supplementary. I could just, I could stop there and write an equation. 75 plus x plus 25 equals 180, and then I could solve that. Um, I could do it another way too. I, I, I could take what I know and I could say, hey, um, well, if if this right here is 75, or even if this one is 75, both of these are supplementary with this angle here. So I could say, hey, that means this has to be 105, because 75 and 105 are 180. And once I know that, I could say, hey, the angle that I want to find out about is now vertical with 105. 
vertical angles are equal, so I could again write an equation, and this one could just be x plus 25 is equal to 105, because they're vertical, and I could solve that. Both of those equations that I've come up with both get the same answer. They both come out to be uh, x equals 80, so that's going to be our answer. I want to remind you that that does not mean that the value of the uh, angle is 80. We know that that angle is 105. Uh, it has to be because it's going to be vertical with this other one. Okay. What it means is that x is 80. And sure enough, if we plug in 80 for x, 80 plus 25 is 105. Okay. So we're going to use our knowledge of corresponding uh, vertical, supplementary, uh, same side interior, alternate interior, all of those things to solve some problems. Um, hopefully uh, you guys do well with this. Good luck.